You're listening to Catholic Express, the daily podcast for Catholic kids that strives to plant seeds of faith. There sprouts. Today is Friday, August 14th, 2020. It is also the feast day of St. Maximilian Kolbe. Now, all week we have been talking about the ninth commandment You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. And we learn again and again when we get to know people, really know who they are and hear their stories, that each person is a unique creation of God, a true daughter or son of His, and a temple of the Holy Spirit. All week, we have been talking about some incredible saints. We've talked about St. Lawrence, St. Clara of Assisi, St. Jane Francis de Chantel. Yesterday, we talked about St. Edith Stein. And today, we celebrate the feast day of St. Maximilian Kolbe. Now, St. Maximilian Kolbe is one of my favorite saints. And remarkably, he lived almost at the exact same time as St. Edith Stein. St. Edith Stein was born in 1891. St. Maximilian Kolbe was born in the year 1894. Now, he lived in Poland. He grew up in a very devout family. And there's a beautiful story from when St. Maximilian Kolbe was young. His mother had been frustrated with him for being a child, which maybe your mother gets frustrated with you sometimes too. And he went to church to go pray to his other mother, his beloved, blessed mother. He, from a very young age, was very close to Mary. So he was there praying before a statue of Mary, and he was begging her with all of his heart, what is to become of me? In other words, what should I do with my life? What should I be when I grow up? And in this moment, Mary appeared to him. She appeared to him, and she offered him two crowns. One was a beautiful white crown, and the other was jagged and red. And looking at these two crowns, St. Maximilian Kolbe understood that one was the white crown of being a pure and holy saint, and the other was the red crown of martyrdom, of giving your life for love of Jesus Christ. Now, she offered these crowns to St. Maximilian Kolbe, and she seemed to ask him which one he wanted. And because he adored her so much as a mother and wanted to please her, he looked at her and said, both. Now that is how the vision ended and years passed. Soon, St. Maximilian Kolbe discerned a call to the religious life. He joined a Franciscan order and he was ordained a priest. He used his time in the order to spread as much love for our Blessed Mother as possible. And he was always looking for new ways to do this. In fact, he started a radio station just to talk about Mary. He started a newspaper and he was known to carry a pocket full of miraculous medals. So whoever he met, whether it was someone in politics or someone in a church or a child on a playground, he would take out a miraculous medal and hand it to them. And he would tell them about how he was a knight for the Immaculata, meaning he was a soldier in the army of Mary. And how when we are a soldier for Mary, our mission is to love. And he invited everyone he could into this mission with him. Towards the end of his life, St. Maximilian Kolbe felt called to even be a missionary. He sent Franciscans to Japan, where they where the faith had not yet taken hold. He went there, even though it was dangerous to evangelize the people that lived there. However, he became ill and he was forced to come back to Poland. Now, if you remember during what happened during the lifetime of St. Enos Stein, St. Maximilian Kolbe also was forced to deal with the Nazis. He lived in Poland, and during World War II, Poland was invaded and taken over by Germany. So the Nazis were there. And although we think of the Nazis as targeting just the Jews, which of course they did, they also targeted the Poles. They did not like the Polish people, but they particularly hated Catholics and Catholic priests. 
Although St. Maximilian Kolbe could have saved himself and hid from the Nazis, he didn't do that. And eventually he was arrested and he too was taken to Auschwitz. For whatever reason, St. Maximilian Kolbe was not executed as soon as he was arrived. Instead, he was sentenced to heavy labor. We know also that the Nazi officers in the camps hated Catholic priests, and they gave them the hardest, dirtiest work. They oftentimes beat them for no reason. St. Maximilian Kolbe, however, became known as a man that refused to hate in every situation, no matter how he had been treated or who was talking to him, he always responded with kindness. When he was in the hospital, he insisted that his wounds be looked at last. He oftentimes shared the small bits of food he had with those that he thought were more hungry than he. And he took every opportunity he could to serve people as a priest. At night, he would crawl out of his bed and go and hear the confession of others laying on the ground next to them, listening to their sins and offering them absolution. Now, as it would be, eventually one man did escape from Auschwitz. And because the Nazis feared that others would try, they inflicted a terrible punishment. Because this one person had escaped, they decided that 10 people, 10 other innocent people would be chosen from this group at the camp and that they would be sentenced to a terrible death. They picked 10 people and locked them in a bunker and they died slowly of thirst and starvation. Now, as the Nazis were going through and picking out the 10 people for this horrible punishment, they picked the people out and they did not pick St. Maximilian Kolbe, but they did pick a man who, when he was picked out, he shouted out and said that he was a father, that he was a husband. And if he was executed, his wife and his children would have no one. Now, in this moment, St. Maximilian Kolbe heard the cries of this soldier about his family And he boldly stepped forward. The Nazi officers were shocked that someone would volunteer for a terrible death like this. But he stepped forward and he offered to go in this man's place. The Nazis said, fine. The man with the family got back into line and St. Maximilian Kolbe went to the bunker where he was locked in. And he slowly died with nine other people. Amazingly, the Nazi officers that later talked about this said that What they experienced in this bunker was more like a church than like a death chamber. That they would come and they would hear St. Maximilian Kolbe leading these people in prayer and song. And that St. Maximilian Kolbe would be kind and generous with them when they came in. It took well over a week for everyone to die this slow and terrible death. And in the end, St. Maximilian Kolbe went to heaven on this day, August 14th the day before the Assumption of Mary, which we celebrate tomorrow. And we know that it was a beautiful moment for him to be reunited with his great and true mother, our Blessed Mother. So Sprouts, I hope you're inspired by this incredible story and this incredible saint. And I want you to do one thing that I know would make St. Maximilian Kolbe very happy. I want you to pray one Hail Mary. It's not very much, and it's something that we can sometimes do without thinking about it, but that's not how I want you to pray today. Take time to say this prayer well and to truly love Mary, a woman that was with St. Maximilian Kolbe every step of his life, but in particular during those hard days at Auschwitz. Love Mary like St. Maximilian Kolbe did so that when this life is over, you can go to heaven to be with her forever. That's it for Catholic Sprouts today. We'll be back tomorrow. But until then, continue to grow in your faith and truly sprout into the beautiful creation that God created you to be. Just one more thing. We like to invite you to come and check out The Creed which is a series for parents and children to use in the home during this uncertain time in the fall. It is a in-depth look at all that we believe, which we profess in the Nicene Creed each Sunday at Mass. 
It is made for the whole family, has some fun printables to go along with it. will be very easy to use no matter which point you are with your own faith. And it is on sale right now for just $7 for the whole bundle, which will take you from September all the way up into Advent. So check the notes for this podcast episode for the direct link to find more details. 